Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be changing this regular background here to a low color background, helping the subject pop out of the picture just like that. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to share. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to really learn how to use Photoshop Elements, not just the few things I show here on YouTube, but the whole program, Take a look at my complete training course and there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. For this Photoshop Elements low color background, we'll be starting off with this picture right here. Now there's a download link and you'll find that in the description if you want to work with the same photograph. The first thing we need to do is to separate the girl out from the background. So we'll make a basic selection around the girl and then put that onto its own layer. And I'll start off by using any selection tool up here. I'll just use the lasso tool and I'll make a nice simple lasso right around the girl, fairly close in but not touching, just a little ways out. And then we'll use the refine edge afterwards to clean up this selection and take clear around. Now this may need a little bit of cleanup afterwards. We'll have to see. If we're lucky it won't, but occasionally the refined edge does need to have a bit of help. Okay, here's our basic selection. Let's now use the refined edge tool. It's right down here. I have my feathering set at one pixel. That's my usual. That just softens the edge up just a little bit. Okay, in refined edge, you can see the brush size right there. That looks pretty good. That's the default size of 35. You may need to change your size right down here depending upon the size of your image. I normally work with this in the overlay mode which gives you this kind of a reddish pinkish overlay. And then I usually come in here and click on Smart Radius as well. Everything else I'll leave at the defaults. And then just come in here and paint in towards the figure. I normally start out a little bit and then move in like that, that seems to do the best job. Now I may not get everything, so you may have to come back in just a few passes like that, just kind of work your way in, and it usually will figure it out. You know, let's go around and get the rest of everything in here. It'll mostly be a little bit tricky around things like hair and so forth, but we should be okay. And we'll just continue to work around the whole figure until we get the whole figure done. Now luckily since we're working right on top of the same image, we'll be using the same image as the background, it doesn't need to be as perfect as you would have if you're actually changing the background to something else. If you're doing a complete change, then it has to be absolutely perfect, make it real nice and clean. But if you're on the same background, then you can be a little bit less perfect and it'll still look just as good. Okay, let's do this side now. Up around here is real strong contrast between the foreground and the background, so this part is very easy. The refined edge has a little bit of a problem when it gets into contrast issues. And if it's too close in contrast, it may have a hard time finding that edge. But again, it's not going to be a problem for us on this particular project. Like right down around the elbow is the one place I would tend to be concerned about this because it's a light background and a white shirt. But I think we'll be okay. Yep, looks like we're going to be okay on this one. Okay, so once that's done, once you have that whole bit of refined edge taken care of, you want to output this to a new layer with layer mask right there. And then choose OK. And that gives us our separation. Now there's a little bit of kind of a thinness in here. That may not be a problem. And up here again, this may not be a problem because again, we're going on to the same background. So let's just not worry about that for this. If this becomes a problem, if we see this, we can go back and we can clean this up on the layer mask, but I don't think this will be an issue on this particular project. Okay, let's come down here. Now we'll be working on the background layer here, so I don't want to work on the actual background image. Let's make a copy of this. Right click where it says background and choose duplicate layer. There you go. Then just hide that one. That's just a safety precaution just in case something goes wrong here. It shouldn't because I'm not actually touching this layer but I still like to do this as a safety precaution. Okay, now we need to have an adjustment layer in here on top of this 
background layer. Let's just go back to our standard move tool and go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer right here, and the one you want is gradient map. Where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, just check that and choose OK. And that applies a gradient onto your background layer on the layer underneath right here. Now the default is your foreground and background, which is black to white in most cases. It could be all kinds of things here. I mean, we could do this, looks kind of weird, we can do that. So lots of fun options in here, really strange things that you can do with this. But what I want is the gray tone here, the black left, white right. And that just converts the background into a black and white image. Now if you click on this area here, that brings up the gradient editor. And the reason for that is we can come in here and do a bit more work on this. There's your black, this is your left side. And here's the right side, that's your whites, and your grays are in between. And notice if you're on one of these two stops, these are your color stops, if you're on one of the two stops, you see this little diamond shape right in there. That's your color midpoint. You can grab this and pull it back and forth to adjust the midtone. Now be very careful with this. If you're up here, you're going to get a new color stop. If you're down like this, you see a little kind of a pointy finger, you get a new color stop. You have to be exactly on it where that arrow is showing. You can then pull that back and forth a little bit and adjust your midtone values. You can do the same thing for the end stops. They're easier to grab because they're bigger. If you want to have darker darks, just pull the left side in a bit. That darkens the darks down. You can see that. If you want to lighten your lights up, pull the right side in. So you have control in here over your values, which is very, very nice. Okay, so I'm going to just make it kind of nice. It looks pretty good. Maybe I'll come in here and grab this one and bring the midtones up a little bit. Now I clicked in the wrong spot there, so it gave me a color stop. If, if this happens to you, just grab it and pull it straight down, and it goes away. Then click on one of your end color stops again, and there's your midpoint. It's easy to miss this, so make sure that you're exactly on that. Look at that arrow right there. There it is. And you see the color midpoint? We can now adjust the midpoint values. Make my midpoint just a bit left, maybe a bit to the right, I think. Just trying to find the right look in here. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I think my values are nice. When you're happy with all that, go ahead and click OK. And then you can close this one down as well. Now the main reason to do that as an adjustment layer is I can go back here. There's the adjustment layer. Where it says gradient map. I can double click on the left side thumbnail and that brings back up the gradient map and I can re-edit that if I want to. So it gives me flexibility by having that as an adjustment layer instead of using it over here from the filter menu. So much better this way. Okay, you can see a little bit of color in right here. That's that bit of grayness we saw on the layer mask up here. Let's go ahead and fix that. Click over on the layer mask side, look for that light blue outline right here. And then if you hold the Alt key down, click on that layer mask, it opens up the actual layer mask. Now we can easily see that edge. Now the best way to do this is simply to increase the contrast of this particular layer. And I like doing that using the contrast tools. Right over here we have the burn tool. This will darken things down. The dodge tool down here will lighten things up. So I'll go for the burn tool, bring the size up a bit, I have a pretty good size. And I'll just come in here. All I'm doing is I am increasing the contrast. I'm burning it so it's not touching the whites. It's only increasing the darkness of the dark. So it's a real easy way to kind of clean up your layer masks. See there how it's not touching that white area at all. And then just cleaning out some of that other stuff we don't want to have in there. Again, real easy way to clean up these layer masks. You can be kind of sloppy about it because you're not going to be bothering anything that's pure white. See, if I'm in here, nothing happens. So it's just darkening down the dark part, and that helps make it nice and clean on the edges. Okay, I'll burn the top a little bit here. That looks good. Now click back on the background, and that takes you back to the regular image, and there, all that color is now been removed. So we solved that, we cleaned that up. So we have our gray tone now, our grayscale background. You may have our full color foreground. We now want to bring back in a bit of color on the background. That's easy to do. Go back up here and go right here to your gradient map layer right there. And then bring the opacity down of this layer. 
Let's bring it down to about 70%. There it is. And there's some color coming back in again. So it's real subtle color, but it's really toned down, which helps make your foreground subject really pop out of your photograph. Now you can adjust the amount you want here. Here's very, very low opacity setting. Here's clear to the top. The amount that you want will depend upon your actual picture. The brighter the colors are in your picture, the more you'll have to keep this towards a higher end. So just find one that works out well for your particular picture. I think 77 looks pretty good in here. And then you can check this, just uncheck and check, and there it is, the original, and there it is with our low color background. So there you go. That's how to do this low color background trick. It's really pretty straightforward. The main thing is just to get that initial separation of your foreground subject from the background using a standard layer mask. Then anything you want in here, but doing this kind of gradient map in here is really nice. Again, if you make this by using an adjustment layer, and you'll find that up here under layer, come down to adjustment layer, and your gradient map is right there. Just one more time on that one. Double click on the icon, brings back up your gradient map, click on the gradient, and there's your editor. So by having it on its own layer like this, it's easy to go back and make adjustments in the future if you want to. Okay, there you go. That is our low color background effect.